Sticking to your budget can be super hard. I hear it all the time from friends. They're like, I don't even wanna tell you how much I spent last week at the grocery store. Others say they go every couple days, but they still feel like they have no food in their cabinets. And I'm always like, oh yeah, you can do this, that, the other thing. I have all these ideas, but I've never really put it all down in one place. So in today's video, I'm sharing with you a stick to your budget checklist that will help you to save money on groceries. I guarantee this is going to help you save. This week, I will be following my checklist, sticking to it, checking it twice, and spending $125 for the week for my family. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. And don't worry, you don't need to be like taking crazy notes. I wrote the whole checklist up for you and it is free for you in the description box down below. Now it's funny because I've had this checklist in my head for a long time. You probably don't know this, but until 2020, I spent 10 years in financial analysis kind of explains my whole uh, penny pinching mentality. And my coworkers and I always used to do our grocery uh, lists on Excel during our breaks. And then we would compare grocery prices and be like, hey, you know, this thing's on sale and even budget friendly recipes. And it's not even like we were like, you would think like, oh, were we underpaid or something? It's not like that. You know, we were just trained to be penny pinchers and make sure that we were getting the best bang for our buck. It was just in us and who we were as financial analysis, uh, analysts. And when I left that job in 2020 and cut our income, I really need to double down on that. And so I've been practicing this method kind of ever since. The first step on this checklist is to shop your pantry. You wanna list out what you have for breakfast, lunches, dinners. You wanna look in your drawers, your cabinets, your refrigerator, and your freezer. I always recommend that you do this, but it's obviously step one before you even go grocery shopping to shop what you already have. You also want to know what you're out of. So what kind of things do you need to buy at the store that you always use regularly? Or maybe something you don't use regularly, but you want to know that you're still going to need it. Now that you know what you already have, make a meal plan. I always aim to make three meals based off of what I have in my pantry or my pantry ingredients. And one of those, I always try to make like a bean recipe or a vegetarian. It doesn't hit 100% of the time, but I do find that it saves a lot of money and it ends up pushing me to use those canned or dried beans that I have in my pantry that are super inexpensive. Now these meals do not have to be like 100% everything you have in your pantry. They just wanna be based around your pantry ingredients. Like the main stuff, you wanna have a few things for it. Then I get looking at my local flyers. The local sale flyers, especially the first page, those are all what they're called boss leaders. So there are, I, there are ways to get you into the store and they actually are selling those products either at cost or close to. So you wanna find some things on your local sales flyers that inspire you to make some dinners. So you have four more dinners to plan out after you're using your pantry dinners. And I try my best to base those around what is already on sale, especially meat products and things like that. Now, I also try and pick one meal that I know is gonna be an easy one and potentially even more depending on my week. So you wanna consider what your week is going to look like. So if you're gonna have a busy week, you try and do all busy meals. Don't try and overexert yourself Planning and making sure that you stick to a budget doesn't have to be like crazy. You're not making elaborate meals every night. It just has to be what works for you and your family. And then if you are a cook, somebody that enjoys making special recipes, pick out a recipe that you have been wanting to try for a while. So this keeps you inspired week after week. And I always find that those recipes that I really wanted to try are often, um, they happen to be a little bit more involved. So I try and just pick one and um, that way you kind of get the bug out of your system. You get to try something new and you're not spending an arm and a leg doing so. So you still wanna pick something that's based around what's on sale. So if chicken's on sale this week, I would pick a chicken meal that I've been wanting to make. I also need to take a look at breakfasts and lunches. Now I like to take a look in my pantry, look around, see what I have for those. I also like to use leftovers as lunch ideas and kind of go with that. So a lot of times I have a lot of stuff already stocked up for breakfast and lunches, but you always wanna take inventory. Do you need more eggs? Do you need some more oatmeal? That happened to me the other day. I actually had to buy more oatmeal, which felt like crazy to me, but it happens, right? And when I do, if I can find it on sale, I stock up. In this particular week, I had plenty of breakfast stuff, and then I just pulled out some ground beef to make some Big Mac bowls for lunch, so I knew I needed to fill in a few things like lettuce, tomatoes, and pickles. Now that I know what I'm making for the week, it's time to actually make that list. I use my grocery budget calculator, which is also down in the description box for you for free. It's an Excel file or a Google Doc file, and you can basically plug and play and plug into that grocery budget thing, whatever you would like to buy. So I just pick out all the things. Okay, I already have my ground beef. 
I already um, have some stuff to make dressing. And so then I just knew that I needed tomatoes, lettuce, things like that. And I kind of just, I try and go with obviously what is on sale, but if there's nothing on sale, I just estimate the price of that product. I also always try to overestimate the price of the product. So if I think that pickles are gonna be like two bucks, I'll say maybe they're gonna be $3 because I'd rather end up under, under budget in the end than over budget because I didn't budget properly. Now, when I'm entering all these items in, I do not yet worry about my total grocery budget. I'm just entering in based off of what I think I need to buy and how much I think it's gonna cost. Do not worry about that total budget section yet. So after entering everything in you need for meals, focus on what you're out of. So write down all the things that you know you need to replace from your pantry that even though you may not need them for meals, you know that you will need them in the future. Then we're gonna hit back on those sales and go through all the things that we know our family will eat in the future, like non-perishable items or things that you can freeze that are a good deal. So you may not need them this week, but write them right down in that grocery budget and that grocery list and take a look and see how that looks. As you can see for this particular week, I told you not to worry about where you were compared to budget. It looks like I'm over budget and that's okay. That's how things should shape up most weeks in my household. I then pare it down. So what I would like to do is spend about 80% of my budget on food for the current week and 20% on stock up items. So I decide whether those stock up items are worth it really, you know, when I put them in, then I really think about it and decide whether I really wanna buy them with that little small 20% of my budget. And then the same thing with that 80%, if I'm over the 80% on what I was choosing for the week, I kind of decide, you know, maybe I could go without that. Maybe I could pick a different cheaper meal for the week. So you kind of have to decide what works for you. Uh, but a lot of times I'll sometimes pick a cheaper meal. Um, I will sometimes just think about things that I already have and see if I can be a little bit more creative with what I'm making or maybe I decide I really don't need that one item. For example, I was thinking about something the other day where I needed to use ricotta cheese and ricotta is more expensive than cottage cheese and cottage cheese is a good alternative. So initially I said, okay, I'm gonna use ricotta, but then I realized I need to cut things down. So I actually switched over to cottage cheese and I saved half. Something else to consider is those items that you were out of. Can you wait an extra week and wait until those items go on sale? So if the items aren't already on sale, um, is it something that you need right away? Like sometimes I'll have mayonnaise in my refrigerator, but I don't have an extra jar of mayonnaise sitting around and it's not on sale. In that case, I just kind of leave that off to the side, something to think about for next week, but not necessarily something that I need to buy right away. Also want to mention with that 20%, and that's what I did in this particular week, I actually just like left most of that because I ended up realizing like some of the things that I wanted to buy I really didn't need or it wasn't the best price. And I wanted to see what they had on clearance. So it was like, okay, I might buy those stock up items, um, but I might also just forgo them and then use that money for clearance items. So it's actually to get, able to get a huge clearance haul this week. So something like the Cabot cheddar that I initially was gonna buy for $7.99, I thought that was a great deal. I decided, you know what, we don't really need that. We have cheese on hand and I know cheese goes on sale all the time. So I'm actually gonna buy these clearance items instead. So after doing all this, I almost always come in right at or around my budget and it's a pretty easy checklist, I personally think, because I practiced it for years, but um, to kind of get you going and get you through and get you so that when you get to the store, there are no surprises. I have tried this with different price points and budget plans. So even though I'm doing $125, I've done $80, I've done $100, I've done $50, and it all works. So now that I've gone through the plan, I am prepped and ready. Let's get shopping. Okay, we gotta get Ben out. We've got like 10 minutes at Shaw's and we're just gonna run in super quick and see if they have any clearance. I feel like I got pretty lucky on this one. My Shaw's is doing like a, like they're moving all the shelves around and everything. And when they do that, they kind of go through and then they get rid of a bunch of products. So there was a lot of choices. Um, they have like a little refrigerated section. I didn't necessarily grab anything from there, but they have like that. And then they had like a whole cart full of snacks and stuff. And then they always have like the meat section with the meat clearance. And I like to snag things from there and just put that in the freezer. And then Market Basket had some stuff too. So I just go check those shelves. And I was also pleased that like when I went shopping, some of the things that I got were cheaper. So like the pickles were $2.50 and I thought they'd be a little bit more than that. Overall, I think it was a win. So I just got back from the store. 
at my first stop at Shaw's, I ended up spending $31.90. You can see with all of my savings that I saved 56% and I had a savings of $40. And a lot of that was some really good deal on the steak. So I'll have to show that to you. And then at Market Basket, which is my local grocery store, shopping the sales, sticking to my list for the most part, ended up at $90.37. So I ended up spending a little over, let's see, 122, 27, something like that. So we were even under budget. And I kind of wish that I grabbed a like red pepper or something because I really like to have those in those um, little bowls that I've been making, the cottage cheese bowls. So I might still run out and grab one just because I want red pepper uh, and just forgot to grab it. So this is, Kind of everything that I purchased and I'll go through it all with you and then we'll get to cooking this week. Okay so for my uh, chicken Caesar salad I got a rotisserie. I grabbed the rotisserie that is cold and that ends up being $4.29. The ones that are warm at my market basket are $4.69 so you're saving like 40 cents but hey I like to save money where I can and I didn't feel the need to buy like a fresh hot one because we're going to eat it tomorrow and the next day I'm going to shred up half of it and put half of it into a salad so it is what it is. I got some croutons. I was a little disappointed at the price on the croutons. These were a dollar fifty versus like I thought they'd be more like a dollar um, but they didn't have anything cheaper and I was going to go over to Dollar Tree just to get croutons and for some reason Julian wanted the classic versus the Caesar. So I went with it, even though I'm not even sure he really understands what that means. <laughs> At Shaw's, I saw these non breads, and as you know, you do not not buy non if you see non. So two fifty for each of these. I'll throw these in my freezer. We're not even going to use these this week. Actually, I am going to use non bread on Sunday, but I'm going to put it in the freezer till then because it's it's not going to last. Then we've got some milk. I forgot to put this on my original list, and so I ended up switching out that like big block of cabbage cheese that was going to be seven ninety nine. I don't I didn't actually need it I do have cheese on hand so I just was that was a kind of a stock up item and this was $5.69 I got some of the salsa verde this is the only brand they had I think it was like $2.99 so it was a little cheaper than I anticipated as expected the Hellman's mayonnaise is expensive it's $5.49 I actually like the Berman's one at Aldi so I may be going over there in a little bit maybe in the next few weeks to shop and get some of the Berman's to just kind of stock up on and Keep the cheaper stuff around because that's just crazy business. I got the corn tortillas for the salsa verde um, enchiladas and those were $1.50. Super happy about that. 25 of them. The corn tortillas should be pretty inexpensive. Cucumbers were a dollar cheaper than I expected. 50 cents each. So two for a dollar. Love that. Mozzarella cheese sticks. The kids broke into them at the grocery store. They were so hungry. Those were $4.99 for how many comes in this package? It's a pound, but I don't know. Oh, 16, yeah, okay. 16 of them. I like to buy the bigger package if I can, but even though they ate like three or four of them in the store. All right, Julian came in and he's gonna tell us about the watermelon. We, the, there wasn't a watermelon on the list that, that um, on Mama's list at the grocery shop, but I wanted it so bad that she got me one. <laughs> I ended up having a little extra in the budget, so it worked out okay. So one thing that we didn't purchase was the feta cheese that was supposed to be on sale for $2.50, and I couldn't find the $2.50 feta, so I just didn't get it because we didn't really need it. And so this is $2.77, so we were able to switch that out, plus we had some extra cash because we only spent a dollar on the um, cucumbers, and there was each of these things was less money too, so we had a little bit more to work with. The extra cash was spent on the water bag. Well, a little bit, and then... I also had um, a little extra, so I was able to get some eggs. These were $3.99. On the chicken, this is for our grilled chicken, $12.66. Like I said, I like to buy the organic. Um, you totally don't have to. There are definitely times when I don't, especially if I'm doing like budget challenges for you guys. But on a regular week like this, I, I can fit it in my budget and I feel good about that. So I got the chicken breast for grilling and then this is gonna be for our like, um, simmer dish because I'm not going to be here that night put it in the crock pot and that's uh, nine dollars and 74 cents for and the thighs yeah and you can get a lot a lot more if you don't want to buy organic it's totally fine you can stock up then I got these raviolis these were um two for three bucks so these are a huge deal very what very inexpensive they were not 12.99 <laughs> I'm joking 
You're joking. So we're gonna have these for dinner one night with some garlic bread. I got these Fuji apples. Those were an addition too, because I realized I'm like, we didn't, I didn't put a lot of fruit on my list. So I was able to make that work because I can't remember, just with everything being less expensive, it actually worked out okay. So I ended up having more money to work with. Um, $4.99 for those. The, the pickles for the Big Macs um, bowls. Come in. Pickles for the Big Mac bowls were $2.49. I think I thought they'd be three, so. I was able to get basically like six pounds of organic bananas at the 59 cents a pound. I also threw in some blueberries for 250. And then instead of four avocados, I got two at a dollar, I think 29. At Shaw's there was, you know, some stock up items like these uh, pork rinds, which I was able to grab. These are good just cause like they're no carb and the whole thing has like 160 calories and they're cooked in the fat of the pig and they have like, they're humanely raised. Those I mean, gross. not that I need to like. I would not like those. Okay, you don't have to eat them. Not that I need to explain it, but um, these are just a good choice, I think. So these were $1.25 each. I got four of those as kind of like a snack type thing. And then there was these petite sirloin steaks, three of them. They're usually, I think, geez, they're usually like 15 bucks. And then they were on sale and then they were half off. So in total, I paid $19.47 for all three. And I'm just gonna place these in the freezer and we're gonna use these another time. So these are gonna be great to grill one evening. And I was able to get grass-fed steak for half off. So they'll be really good. And then last but not least, Dan really wanted some Spindrift and these were on sale two for 10. These are not cheap items. So if you don't, if you're not buying drinks, you're definitely gonna save some money, especially these Spindrifts. I feel like every time I'm like, they go up in price. <laughs> like it used to be like, oh, when they'd go on sale like three for nine or three for 9.99. Now it's two for 10 and that's a deal. So, whew, that's a lot. Either way, we came in below budget, happy about that. And we'll get cooking for the week. So right away, Julian wanted some watermelon. So I sliced them up for him. For this weekend meals, I decided to go through by meal. So we're just getting started off with breakfast and you'll see kind of all the things that we ate for the week. So for this morning's breakfast, we're doing leftover quiche from Mother's Day. And then I had picked some of this up. This was in the freezer, this breakfast sausage. So I'm just gonna cook this up for the boys and hopefully we'll get through this stuff. So it is early. It's like early, so early I can't talk. It's like, a quarter seven. The kids are actually already having breakfast. I made them some that leftover quiche from yesterday. We just went through the rest of it for Mother's Day, which was perfect so we didn't waste anything. They had also some of the sausages from yesterday and a half a banana. And Ben enjoyed that too. With eating these little tiny cheesecake things from like Skinny Taste. So they're actually like a lot of um, yogurt, like Greek yogurt and cream cheese. So not too sugary. He didn't even care for them, but. <laughs> I gave it to him anyway. Right now, I'm gonna get started on a cottage cheese bowl for myself. I've been sharing this on Instagram a lot lately. This is like my go-to um, breakfast. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make that. And then I'm also inspired to make Ben some more quiche because he really enjoyed it and he's like not big on the vegetables. So I'm gonna make him like a crustless broccoli quiche for the rest of the week. So I snagged this cottage cheese on clearance a few weeks ago and it was good till June. So I got, I bought all of them. <laughs> because we're eating, we eat a lot of cottage cheese in here. So I'm gonna do about half the container, which is about a cup. So for a cottage cheese bowl, I like to cut up some scallions. That gives it a really good flavor. And then do cucumber. If I had red, yellow, green peppers, I would chop those up and put those in too. I just don't have any today, but the cucumber is really good. And then I'm also gonna chop up some tomatoes. I also like to use like the little sprinkles tomatoes, like the teeny tiny ones or the grape tomatoes, just depending what's on sale. And last but not least, You'd say I snagged this on clearance too. This is a everything bagel seasoning with no salt because cottage cheese is pretty salty. And I find that if you add like the everything bagel with the salt, it's like way too much, but without it, it's delicious. So a sprinkle of this over that, I totally recommend it. So to make this crustless quiche, I'm just gonna use five eggs. I've got a cup of heavy whipping cream, which is amazing because I have that leftover from Mother's Day, so it's a great way to use it up because we're not gonna use it for anything else. A quarter cup of mayo, which I feel like I didn't put in last time, but I'm gonna give it a try this time, I guess. Uh, one and a quarter teaspoons of garlic salt, one teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and then 
a cup of steamed broccoli, roughly chopped, which I actually had left over from the last broccoli that I had just on Mother's Day, so just a couple days ago. And a great other way to use that up. And then um, it says three green onions chopped. I have about two, so I'm gonna slice those up. It says four slices of bacon, but I'm actually gonna use my um, leftover sausage, because I just have like one patty left, and I add that in. And then we want one and a half cups of sharp cheddar cheese, and I know I've been like, no shredded cheese. But that's not 100% true if the cheese is on sale for cheaper than the block. So it's always whatever's cheaper for the size. And I got a bunch of these Cabot ones on sale a couple weeks ago and I could not pass up the deal. So that's why I have the shredded cheese. And I'm not like completely averse to it. It is better when you shred it yourself, but I'm just all about what's cheaper. So this was only about 40 minutes and it looks really good. You can tell it's cooked all the way through. It will deflate quite a bit um, once it comes out, but you can tell. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna make some oatmeal and I'm gonna show you guys a trick a friend told me. This is just how I'm gonna make it today. I don't have any of the packet, or I do, but I'm just, I have time, so I'm gonna make it with the fresh oatmeal. I'm, I am still gonna just microwave it. Um, we're gonna do quarter cup of instant oats, some milk, but I'm not gonna put a ton, ton of milk because I'm actually going to crack an egg in here. And I found that cracking an egg into the oatmeal, the kids don't even notice, and it gives them extra protein, which is a great way to start their day. So I started doing that, and it's been a real win. And when I make oatmeal for Tommy, and it's not from the little packet, he likes apples in it. So I just sliced up some apples, and I'll give Julian the rest of that apple. I like to cook it with the apples in it so they get nice and soft. Probably put a little more milk. Not much, though. And I forgot to get it on camera, but Benny had um, some of that crustless quiche. She really loves it. And then part of a blueberry muffin that I had made for Mother's Day, the, the Jordan Marsh recipe for blueberry muffins. So I have JJ's breakfast here, and I'm just gonna mix Tommy's up so you can see it looks a little eggy. But once we mix it, we're gonna add in some maple syrup. Tommy loves flaxseed on his. <laughs> May not be normal for a kid his age, but if there's no flaxseed, it's no good. And some cinnamon. Yes, it has to be covered like this or else it's unacceptable. <laughs> and what do you know, it's another cottage cheese bowl for me, but we are out of cottage cheese, so tomorrow will be something new. So for this morning for breakfast, in uh, effort to keep cleaning out the freezer because I have a plan for next week where I'm hopefully getting a lot of freezer things, um, just cooking up some more of those sausages. I had like three packages of those, I think. And then I made um, just freezer waffles for the kids for breakfast. So just sausage and waffles. For the fifth breakfast, I just made pretty much the same thing I've been making the other mornings. And I just had some eggs. And then my husband, Dan, has been ordering out, which is not my favorite, but it's just where we're at right now. I'm going to try and make some stuff in the coming weeks. It is Saturday morning, so we're just going to open up some pancake mix here and make up some old pancakes for breakfast. Because, like, pancake breakfast on Saturdays. I don't know. The key to the best pancakes is a nice buttered pan and cooking over like a medium low it's perfect also my kids are super weird about pancakes i want to make like the little ones so you can just have like a bunch of them hello i want to make the little ones but they're like no we want them big like they come at the restaurant so i make like one per pan and then i make a bunch of little ones for like just to save and use as snacks but i don't know why I did want to show you what I did for my pancakes and uh, I should have got it maybe a little earlier before I ate it all, but I actually put a dollop of just like plain Greek yogurt on top and then I microwaved some frozen blueberries. And this is a pretty good um, way to eat some protein pancakes with some extra uh, protein for you and not like a ton of sugar. Um, pretty delicious. We actually ate our leftover pancakes on Sunday, so it was a couple of pancake days in a row, and that pretty much rounds out the week. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get a ton of kid lunches on camera, but we did some hot dogs, we did some peanut butter and jelly. We just used up what we had around. It was really nothing fancy, just, just the regular old kids lunches, nothing to report. Dan and I did have a couple different lunches through the week, and I'm gonna show you how we made them. Frosted a couple pounds of beef, and I'm cooking this up for some Big Mac bowls for us for lunch. So here are a couple of the Big Mac salads, and I even made my own dressing this time. I'll just put that down in the description box for you, and I have like a whole recipe for them too. So I didn't I didn't go through it this time just because I recently went through a Big Mac salad, but this is gonna be our lunches for the week. Mm. 
And then one day I did make a rotisserie chicken salad because I had some leftover rotisserie chicken and I just wanted to use it up. So it was another option. You can do some cucumber. I had some avocado leftover. So it's Saturday morning and we're already out of our like um, Big Mac bowls for the week. So I just took out this ground chicken from the freezer and I'm just gonna cook this up. See if I can find any vegetables to add to it. And that's gonna pretty much be it for Dan and I for lunches for the rest of the week. So just packing lunches and snack, I kind of forgot to cover this yesterday. I had all these things left over from last week, which is great. So I just had a big snack stock up last week. I've got um, applesauce, Cheez-Its, and a banana. Perfect little snack for Julian. He just goes a half day, so he'll eat lunch at home. And I realized for Tommy, we're looking at the same thing because he's gonna buy lunch today. He's allowed to buy a couple times a week and he's having chicken nuggets, he likes those. It's $3 per meal, so it's like six bucks a week max. And uh, that's what we do in this family. You do whatever you want. I've got a banana, applesauce, and a cheese stick. I just wanted to share this little tip of like silly things that I do to save money or just like not waste food. Um, for Mother's Day, I had all these mini donuts and then I also had these cookies that my mother-in-law brought over and she makes the best chocolate chip cookies. I don't, you know, no rhyme or reason. She actually uses the Toll House cookie recipe just like I do, but hers are a million times better than mine. Anyway, the point is we're not gonna eat these this week just because Dan and I are really eating healthy these days and we're not gonna have cookies and the kids have lots of other sweets that they're gonna eat. But because these are so good and I know that at some point I might need like a little something to put out, I'm gonna throw these in the freezer. Chocolate chip cookies freeze really well and then I will have them for the future. Now we're moving on to our dinners for the week. I was filming a $5 10 minute dinner video during this week so I'm not going to show you kind of all the details on these I will put that video down in the description box but raviolis were definitely one of them we also did burritos this was in that video but it was also a freezer meal for me so like it was a pantry meal which was great because just keep burritos around at all times quick mix up a quick green bean from a can and it can be a delicious dinner I also did a quick Caesar salad with a rotisserie chicken. As I say, all hail the rotisserie chicken because it just makes so much food. So I used about half of that for that. And then I was able to use the other half of the rotisserie chicken for these green chili chicken enchiladas. This is something I had been wanting to make. It ended up being really budget friendly and delicious. Total winner. Dan was like, oh, these are really good. Did you make those? I'm like, yes, I made those. I'm gonna start by taking our rotisserie chicken what is left of it and shredding the pieces we're hoping to get three cups here just want to interject here real quick so you can take all of this carcass and you can actually turn this into a delicious um chicken bone broth chicken broth whatever you want to make out of it you don't have to but you can and it's super budget friendly and it's actually just so much more delicious than the ones that you buy at the store and better than chicken bouillon, although I do love chicken bouillon, but if you have the time, you can do that. You can always also take this and freeze it and then do it when you do have time. I have a little shout out to the rotisserie chicken here because I mean, even if it's not rotisserie, just like a regular chicken, you get so much meat. I was hoping to get three cups out of this and I've already made one dinner out of this. We had those chicken Caesar salads. I got four cups, so we have more than enough, more than we need here. And so for not even $5, um, we're getting two really robust meals out of this. And it's just kind of a no brainer. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of the salsa verde at the bottom of a nine by 13 pan. Then heat up the uh, corn tortillas in the microwave for about 30 seconds, just so that they're like pliable. We put a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese, chicken about two tablespoons of each and then a drizzle of the salsa verde on that and roll those up and then put them seam side down into the 9 by 13 pan then you want to top that with the rest of your salsa verde and cover that with shredded cheese we're going to bake it uncovered for 20 to 25 minutes until that cheese is melty and bubbly and the enchiladas are super hot then let it rest and then i'm going to serve it with chunks of avocado over top and I even made up a quick, like what I call my kid-friendly pico de gallo. I have the recipe down uh, in the description box for you guys. I made it a few weeks ago too, so I'm not gonna go through the whole thing again, but such a winner. And it's just beautiful. It's so, so delicious. You can serve this with rice if you'd like. We're just gonna eat the enchiladas as they are um, and have a great night. I am actually going to a Blink-182 concert tonight. 
but Dan's home with the boys, so I want to get them something to eat for dinner. Dan's, he can cook. You've and seen him cook chicken. before. And yeah, we're gonna use this um, like Thai coconut curry simmer sauce that I bought. Always great for a pinch. So like two twenty-five for this. We're gonna pour it right on top of the chicken. Super inexpensive meal. But, but if it, but if we don't like it, I, it, it, Mama said we're go Daddy's gonna have to put yogurt on it. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, we're just gonna do this simmer sauce over this in the crock pot and I took out some naan bread and then I even have like leftover um, rice from the other night, which I didn't show you guys, but I did like a grilled chicken. Um, I was gonna do something like fancy, but I literally just put salt and pepper on it and grilled it because it was nice out and we just had a long day. So sorry for not showing you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put this on low for like three hours and they'll have that with the leftover rice and the naan bread and it'll be a perfect dinner for them. Now on the Saturday, we were going to a friend's birthday party. So I made this Mexican street corn pasta salad. The whole recipe for this is in my summer sides video. So I'll put that in the description box for you as well. You'll be able to get to all of these recipes. And I even have the recipe written out on my website. So this was delicious and it was actually really pantry friendly. So I'd consider this to be a pantry meal. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Make sure to get your copy of the stick to your budget checklist down in the description box. It is free for you for watching this video. And make sure the next time that you're on YouTube, you're watching Meals with Maria.